Welcome. Health Science for DM3, Demystifying Medicine presents an information video on allergic asthma in children. Asthma is a disease that is characterized by the recurrent episodes of reversible obstruction of airflow in the lungs. Asthma can be divided into two categories, allergic asthma and non-allergic asthma. Both types of asthma have similar symptoms which can include coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, rapid breathing, chest tightness and tightness of the airways. In allergic asthma, the immune system plays a role as it is involved in the recognition and response to allergens. Non-allergic asthma does not require the involvement of the immune system and can be caused by a variety of factors such as stress, viruses and dry air. Allergens are characterized as innocuous substances, which can include dog dander, dust, pollen, etc., that we normally encounter but, for unknown reasons, are recognized by the immune system as dangerous. For many people, the presence of common allergens does not cause an immune response and lead to symptoms of asthma. Unfortunately, the adaptive immune system of some individuals, from children to adults, learns to recognize these substances as dangerous and mount an immune response in the lung. This sensitization of the immune system to innocuous antigens is called hypersensitivity. Asthma can be a consequence of the immune system's response to an allergen. This response includes the release of chemical signals such as cytokines, like interleukin-4, 5, or 13, and histamines, all of which either recruit more immune cells to the lung or lead to the symptoms. One of the main cells involved are the eosinophils. These are innate immune cells which are generally thought to be recruited by Th2 helper T cells which are part of the adaptive immune system. The active recruitment of and the high presence of eosinophils to the lung and sputum is called eosinophilia. Eosinophilia is common during many asthmatic attacks in people with allergic asthma and less common for non-allergic asthma. The overall inflammation in the airway leads to increased mucus as well as the tightening of the muscles that line the airways, both of which contribute to the obstruction of airflow and the symptoms of asthma. Over the years, the prevalence of asthma has increased worldwide and the increasing prevalence rates have created an epidemic. More than 300 million people are currently suffering from asthma worldwide and allergic asthma is the most common type of asthma as it makes up 50 to 80 percent of diagnosed cases. Asthma does not only affect adults but is a common chronic condition in children. A large global multicenter study called the International Study of Asthma and Allergies in Childhood, abbreviated as ISAC, was conducted between 1996 and 1997 in 56 different countries to evaluate the worldwide prevalence rates of asthma, allergic rhino conjunctivitis, and atopic eczema. Based on the data, researchers found that the prevalence of asthma was highest in North America, Latin America, and Oceania were more than 20% of the subjects reported on having asthma symptoms. In addition, they found a positive correlation on the prevalence between each of the diseases that were studied. However, the variation in prevalence rates of the diseases suggested that the environment was likely a major factor. There are treatments available for asthma. For greater than 90% of the world's population living with asthma, the standard corticosteroid inhaler or the inhaler used in combination with long-acting beta agonist or LABA is enough to treat symptoms of asthma. It is important to understand that LABA must be used in combination with the corticosteroids because the core issue is inflammation, which LABA does not act upon. Instead, it acts as a bronchodilator for those with narrow passages. However, 50% of medical costs related to asthma come from the 5 to 8% that cannot be treated with this gold standard treatment. This is where the bulk of the research lies when trying to treat these patients. Side effects for the inhalers are minimal in comparison to receiving steroids intravenously because a lower dosage is required via the mouth pathway. 
It is important that when one uses the inhaler that the mouth be rinsed to avoid any lingering effects of the steroid. It is recommended to have a toothbrush next to the inhaler for a simple reminder. One of the primary purposes of asthma management is to attain disease control. Even with the advanced therapeutic approaches that are available which include safe and effective medications, asthma in many patients still remain uncontrolled. Uncontrolled asthma results in adverse effects including reduced cardiovascular fitness, obesity and resulting metabolic syndrome, lung infections including pneumonia and learning impairment in children. Allergic asthma mostly attacks during the childhood and is a common chronic disease in that phase of life. If it is left untreated and thus poorly controlled, the child will face the consequences of asthma such as missing school and thus missing learning opportunities. Also, poorly controlled asthma can affect the attention and concentration negatively. It is worth noting that there is a difference between poorly controlled asthma and severe asthma. Poorly controlled asthma could potentially be really well controlled. Severe asthma, even if controlled, does result in symptoms. Adhering to the physician's recommended treatment regimen can result in improvements in the cognitive function and educational attainment for the children, reduce the risk of exacerbations, and can result in an improved quality of life for the patient. If asthma is poorly controlled, exercise can lead to symptoms which has been erroneously considered as exercise-induced asthma. As a matter of fact, the symptoms that appear during the exercise is due to the poor control of the disease and not because exercise causes asthma. In fact, many Olympic athletes who have had childhood asthma are able to engage in physically demanding activities due to the rigorous control that they have accomplished over the disease. The increasing prevalence of asthma has not only affected the quality of life for the patients, but it has also resulted in huge financial burdens due to the direct medical costs and loss of productivity. Therefore, much research has been dedicated to better understand asthma pathophysiology in the hopes of developing new therapies to control the chronic inflammatory disorder and reduce the burden in young patients.